another magazine from my childhood, poof, gone. Game Informer. Yesterday was announced that they were shutting down. I found an article from Kotaku, everybody's favorite gaming website. It's like TMZ, man. It's like crack. They, they, they will just report anything, and I love it. So let's get into it, you guys. <laughs> GameStop shuts down Game Informer, the longest-running gaming magazine in the U.S. With an update. We can't, we can't forget the updates. The meme stock gaming retailer is laying off staff and taking the website offline. Which doesn't surprise me. They've been struggling for the longest time. And on top of that, they are like they are like just trying anything to make any kind of money, right? Um, such as selling Pokemon cards, which I don't I don't think that it's cool that they're, you know, out here selling Pokemon cards, but hey, it is what it is. The <laughs> let's keep going. Game Informer, the longest running gaming magazine in the US, is officially dead. And GameStop killed it. I don't really like how the first, like, sentence just was like, yeah! Like, it just hit me hard right there. Thinking about it. It began publishing in 1991 and is one of the last remaining physical gaming magazines in the world with cover stories that continue to share deep dives and exclusive interviews with the biggest games coming out from Final Fantasy VII Rebirth to Star Wars Outlaws. No more. I'm not, I'm not even going to lie. When I renewed my GameStop membership, they didn't even give me... Now, mind you, I went years without a GameStop membership. And then over the last like two years, when I got back into collecting Pokemon cards and Funkos and all that stuff, I got back into having a GameStop membership. And with that being said, it, it's not worth it. But... They never even gave me an option for a physical copy of Game Informer over the last two years. Now they sell them, but they don't have an option for it. Staff at the magazine, which also published a website, weekly podcasts, and online video documentaries about game studios and developers, were all called into a meeting on Friday with parent company GameStop's VP of HR. That's when you know stuff is going sideways when the VP of HR shows up. I've never had that happen. I've only had HR called on me once. In it, they were told that the publications were closing immediately and that all the staff were laid off and would be receiving severance terms. At least GameStop did do the right thing here and they did offer them severances as a uh, parting gift. At least one staffer was in the middle of a work trip when the team was told. I love how detailed they have it that one staffer was on a work trip. The sudden closure of Game Informer means that issue number 367, the outlet's Dragon Age, the Vile Guard cover story, will be its last. The entire website has been taken offline as well. The Game Informer Twitter account has posted the following statement online, but sources tell Kotaku it was not written by anyone on the team, which was still in the process of making sure everyone on the staff was informed about the news. Let's continue reading. After 33 thrilling years of bringing you the latest news, reviews, and insights for, every, for the ever-evolving world of gaming, it is with a heavy heart that we announce the closure of Game Informer. This is why, like, that was my epic voice, by the way, you guys. From the early days of pixelated adventures to today's immersive virtual realms, we've been honored to share this incredible journey with you, our loyal readers. While our presses may stop, the passion for gaming that we've cultivated together will continue to live on. Thank you for being part of this epic quest, and may your own gaming adventures never end. They won't. And I'm, yeah. So, this right here is what they posted on X, formerly known as Twitter. If you guys pull up their website, this is what their website looks like right now. It's the same exact thing. It's kind. It kind of makes me sad that you know, they you know they did away with Game Informer, and this is basically the the farewell. The showing off, you know, of Game Informer. I'm surprised. The truth be told, that GameStop didn't attempt to sell them off. Mm. A frustrating turn of events, especially considering that we were about 70% done with the next issue and it was going to have a great cover that Game Informer Magazine content director Kyle Hillard 
uh, after the news broke. I'm furious about the end of Game Informer tweeted a former producer, Ben Hansen. Well, what? It was an incredible 33 year run, and then GameStop pumps this out. Phony, empty farewell. It, I bet money it was written by an AI. Fuck you, GameStop. That. <laughs> Oh, somebody's mad about the closure. And I mean, I don't blame them. Every URL for the GameStop uh, Game Informer website now redirects you to the original statement, erasing more than a decade of articles, reviews, and original reports that help establish a record of the notoriously secretive and volatile video game industry. A recent in-depth feature on the retro gaming studio, uh, Digital Eclipse about gaming history and preservation is one of the stories... That is no longer uh, accessible. A write-up about Game Informer's famous uh, game vault containing re uh, containing releases from access, I mean, from across its decade-long history, is inaccessible. Which, to me, I'm not going to lie. When it comes to game preservation, this this really does truly suck. This is actually very sad. And when I was a kid, I got a ton. A ton of my information from Game Informer. I'm not going to read the rest of this article. Uh, I 100% agree. It, it is more than just a magazine. Um, before, like, really the digital age took over. This is how we got our news about games. This is how we got reviews. This, Like, I made decisions about buying video games from Game Informer years and years and years ago. Um... On top of that, seeing the hype for games from Game Informer from years and years and years ago, like, really hyped me up. Um, also, as a kid, being able to look at some of the cover arts, it's just amazing at what they did for cover arts and all that stuff, but it's just insane. I'll link this article down in the uh, comment section, but I, like, I just genuinely, I want to show you guys this real quick. <laughs> Me personally, I I have always been a Game Informer fan, and like I said, at the end of this, right, like this is what I have on my wall here in the game room, which is pretty uh, ridiculous. But I love Game Informer, and uh, it it just holds a sentimental piece of my heart. But I remember back in the day, you could like take your GameStop points and go and get like Game Informer posters for, you know, the original art from covers. So, of course, I actually have a couple of these that float around the apartment, but this is the one I have in my game room. I absolutely love it. And like I said, it kind of makes me sad to see, like, GameStop didn't even attempt to, like, resell it. They just were like, see ya, and just cancel it. Um, all the articles out there that are just not accessible anymore. And, uh, yeah, that's insane to think about. But, yeah, like I said, I've, I have I love Game Informer. It holds a near and dear piece of my heart. And, like I said, on top of that, they did amazing, amazing art for their covers. And that's just one of, I think, three covers I have hanging up in my apartment. Anyways, you guys, have a great and wonderful day. Y'all take it easy, and I'll catch you Guys, later.